strong conservative backlash, Germany suddenly gets overrun in the opposite direction. Who is Merkel? What do they have on her? How did Merkel become a dictator? Who gave her the power to be God Almighty? Who gave Obama the power to be God Almighty? Who? Who is empowering these evil people? And I will use that word until you hear me. Evil. Evil exists. Evil is a leader who does not respect the wishes of the people. The people have a right to their own national identity. The people have a right to secure borders, just as we have a right to secure doors and windows in our houses. Who doesn't have a right to secure their own house? It's inherent in our Constitution. You have a right in the Bill of Rights to resist illegal search and seizure. The government has no right to break into your car without a warrant, to break into your house without a warrant. You're protected by that. So who gives Mexicans the right to break into your country? Who gives Muslims the right to break into Germany? Criminals. They may as well have a black mask over their face. Merkel may as well have a burglar's mask over her face with a tire iron breaking the windows of Germany, if I were a cartoonist. She's prying the, the hinges off the locks. Why? What do they have on her? Why is she doing it? Uh, don't confuse yourself. Please don't talk to me about the Holocaust again. And don't confuse yourself again. Stop with the humanitarianism. I'm sick of hearing about it. You're just weak. You're weak and you won't stand up for anything. The only thing you hate is this message. The only thing you hate is me. The only thing you hate are those of us who want borders, language, and culture. But you don't hate your real enemies. We're actually your best friends. We are the only ones who are warning America and trying to warn Europe as to what these burglars called leaders are doing to their own nation. And so we'll continue on this show. I was supposed to, I was going to do comedy, channeling Bernie Sanders. I said last week I can only do him when I'm in a bad mood. I'm in such an angry mood, I can't even do him. In other words, it has to be just right, because I'm not really an entertainer. An entertainer can do it anytime. I can't. So... I'm going to continue talking about the invasion of America and how it goes back to the Quran. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. You're listening to the number one streaming news talk radio show in the nation with a 27 share. Rush Limbaugh, by comparison, a great performer, has a 13.7 share. This is the Savage Nation. And we're reaching a crisis of unprecedented proportions with regard to propaganda in the United States of America and the West, which is a product of drugs, sex, and rock and roll. And so when you see entertainers and entertainment triangulating what's really going on with their cleverness, such as impersonating Bernie Sanders about his underwear instead of about his dangerous, insane policies to weaken us further, at the same time that the migration crisis is oversweeping Europe, You'll understand what I'm trying to say to you, and I'm trying to explain to you why the two are connected. It's not easy to connect the two. What does imitating Bernie Sanders by me have to do with me trying to warn you about who this lunatic is, how dangerous he is, and why is the entertainment industry rallying around him by mocking not his policies, but his, his sartorial decisions? In England, for example... Britain has planned a new plan to combat Muslim extremism. British Prime Minister David Cameron, as liberal as they come, unveiled a new strategy just today to combat, combat Muslim extremism, saying the battle was perhaps the defining one of the century. Immediately, Muslims condemned him. It's called the counter-extremism strategy. It was been promised by the Cameron government for months. It's set up to counter the ideology promoted by Islamic State militants, Al-Qaeda, and other Islamists, which the authorities say can lead young Britons onto a path of violence. Cameron wrote this, he said, Subversive, well-organized, and sophisticated in their methods, Islamist extremists don't just threaten our security, they jeopardize all that we've built together. Our successful multiracial, multi-faith democracy, he wrote on his Facebook website. So we have to confront them wherever we find them. And here in America, do you see such a strategy from Hussein Obama's administration? Here in America, has Hussein Obama permitted such a strategy? Answer the question, no. And this is a pretty tough uh, plan. 
the problem with it that they're trying to protect themselves from not being accused of being racist by targeting all groups, including far-right organizations, so-called, in England. In other words, sweeping up the Muslim extremists is one thing, but sweeping up patriots in England is quite another. Because it's only the soccer thug that built Britain. Never forget who built Britain. It was the soccer thug's great-grandfathers. And never forget who could save England. Attention England. England, come in. London, come in. This is Michael Savage calling. Michael Savage calling England. Only the soccer thug can save England from the pansies who have stolen it from you. And they're trying to sweep you up with the same dragnet as the radical Muslims who want to kill you and your wife and children. The same radical Muslims who want to blow you up in a marketplace. The ones that you would stand off against. Attention England. They want to throw you into the same net. So the pansies can, t can continue to run that country and rob it blind. And so they're going to say, well, ooh, look at this. The Muslims are already screaming. Oh, it's extremist. You're picking on Muslims. The so-called Muslim Council of Britain, the country's largest umbrella Islamic organization, very much like our CAIR, a front group in my estimation, said that while terrorism is a real threat, the government strategy was based on poor analysis and risk to alienating those who support it needed. Really? To support it needed? The mosques are helping the British government? Are you kidding me? Are you joking? You must be joking. And I'm trying to point out the truth of what I've often pointed out. That the charge of Islamophobia is used to intimidate you into thinking that there is something wrong with resisting jihad terror and Islamic supremacism. Write that down. You'll find it all, by the way, if you can't write fast enough in Government Zero. My friends, if you want Sharia law, then listen to Saturday Night Live while stoned on marijuana. If you think you're just smoking a J and having a good night, you don't understand. They're, they've been brain deadening you for years. And they bring out these clever devils to entertain you and seduce you. That's what Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Spielberg have done for, for decades. How do you think they make their fortunes? Don't ever underestimate their powers, how good they are. They are great. They are so talented. They are so amazing. They can have you cheering the destruction of your own country without you even knowing it. They'll, every anti-war movie they ever made made you think America was, well, maybe just as bad as the Nazis, maybe just as bad as the Japanese, and now maybe just as bad as ISIS. That's, what, that's the stock and trade for the entire government media complex, is to make everyone doubt their own country. Yeah, you see, by doing that, you say, you know what, hey, they're not that bad. They're just raping and killing and, pi pi and pillaging the Islamic State. They're just selling little girls into slavery. But that's not any worse than, no, let's see, Truman bombing Japan. I mean, weren't eight-year-old girls killed by that bomb? Didn't we put smallpox in blankets with the American Indians? They're not any worse than we are. Isn't that what your son or daughter tells you when she comes home from one of the institutions of lower living, which used to be an institution of higher learning? Ivy League, I can give you another name for it, but I, uh, it's a family show. The Ivy League, if you really want to pollute your children's mind for life, send them to an Ivy League school. You'll see what'll happen. Right away, the first year, they'll give your daughter a condom and tell her to sleep with her, with her, her, her sorority sister. That's for the, for, for, the, uh, for the first month. It's an infestation of filth. You want me to sound like the Pope? The universities are infestations of filth in this country. And what's the result of it? The result is the weakening of the moral fiber. What does that lead to? The meltdown of the nation. Now, nature abhors a vacuum. I'm trying to tell you that. What does that mean in practical terms? It means that in this vacuum, something will enter, like an opportunistic infection, like with AIDS. When you have an autoimmune disease, it's a similar thing. It's not identical. It's not a retrovirus. But with an autoimmune disease, your body fights itself. And as a result, you're weak and infections arise. Rheumatoid arthritis and other illnesses arise because your body's fighting itself. We have political, a political autoimmune disease. A political autoimmune disease. 
called the government media complex. The entertainment industry is the primary progenitor of this virus. This virus is promulgated by the movies. It is promulgated by the news. It is promulgated by the comedy shows. In every one of those shows, if you analyze it from my perspective, I know it's hard to do. You start looking at it that way, you'll never see the world the same way again. Once you understand how deep the propaganda is, and you start to deconstruct the Larry Davids of the world who look like innocent jesters from Brooklyn, you'll understand how dangerous the world really has become because of them. You'll understand how clever Spielberg and Geffen and Katzenberg and Hatzenberg and Matzenberg and Ratzenberg are really, really, really good at their trades. God, I love movies, don't you? But even if you watch American Sniper, somewhere along the the uh, pro projection of that uh, storyline, you start to think he's as bad as the Muslims he's killing, the terrorists, don't you? Wasn't that movie really made to make you think the sniper was bad? Wasn't it really made to make you think that it cost him so much in his own life with his wife and and the people he killed were really not so bad? They were just like George Washington and Paul Revere, Muslim Paul Revere's. Those who put on suicide belts are actually heroes. Clint Eastwood's a heck of a director, I got to tell you. But I saw Clint Eastwood change a number of years ago. And that was with this movie uh, on Iwo, about Iwo Jima. I forget the name of it. I really don't remember it. It was so well done. But concurrently with the movie about Iwo Jima, he did another one with outtakes from the movie from the Japanese perspective, where the Americans were seen as the aggressor and evil. You didn't know that about old Clint? How do you think he went from being a great action figure to suddenly being the darling of Hollywood. How do you think it happened? Once you capitulate to the powers that be, the golden doors swing wide open. You didn't know that. You didn't know that. You didn't know the golden doors swing wide open once you capitulate to the real power structure. So who is this power structure that it's so suicidal? See, that's the ultimate, ultimate question that all of us keep asking. I'm creating like an idea like, okay, someone's running the country. We don't know who it is. Yes, we do. Bernie Sanders tells you it's the bank and it's people who make money. No, they're not running the country. Not at all. He, again, he's distracting you. That's not the problem. The problem is not the people who are making money. So who's running the country? Well, you'll have to start tracing the money to understand that a, a question. You'll see that some of it leads to George Soros. In my opinion, one of the most dangerous men in the history of the world. Not in terms of killing people, but in terms of, terms of killing nations. He's probably do done more damage to kill nations than anyone that I know of. George Soros with his billions of dollars that he makes in the most clever way. Trading against a dollar, trading against the pound, almost broke the British pound, almost broke the Malaysian currency many years ago, provoking great waves of anti-Semitism in Malaysia because of what he did to the Malaysian currency. And what does this money changer George Soros do in the back of the temple? What does he do with his 30 pieces of silver? I'll let you figure out the rest of the allegory. I'm sure you can do it. So let's go back to this, this little boring lesson called Hijra. Or shall I do something else? Shall I go to humor? I'm in a totally black mood. I have no humor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about humor rather than giving you humor. I'm not in the mood. Maybe tomorrow I would be. So I will go back to something sort of humorous, and I'm going to have a contest. You'll hear Michael Savage channeling Bernie Sanders last week on taxes, and then we're going to play uh, the Saturday Night Live impersonation where they don't talk about his dangerous Soviet-era policies, but about his underwear, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And then you'll see how I'm trying to connect it by talking about the grand strategy to invade the West, going all the way back to the Quran. I'll teach you that Muhammad and his followers emigrated from Mecca to Yathra Medina in 622 CE, and there he became a military leader. And this is where all the commands to commit violence against unbelievers originate from. It's important for you to know that the Islamic calendar marks this as the beginning of Islam. Something you won't learn in your, in your, your institution of lower living. So what exactly am I talking about? A member or supporter of ISIS uploaded a document in Arabic just last January, which urged Muslims to get to Libya because of its proximity to southern Europe, and for the important tactical value of its illegal immigration circuits to facilitate infiltration of European cities. And they wrote this in this hidden document. Quote, it has a long coast and looks upon the southern crusader states, which can be reached with ease by even a rudimentary boat, close quote. In February, 
Transcripts of telephone intercepts published in Italy said ISIS 